If you want to speed up healing and tissue recovery, this podcast could be for you. Today, we're going to talk about cupping. If you don't have your health, what do you have? You are a functional medicine doctor. Join us as we blend modern and ancient wisdoms to be well now. Welcome to the Be Well Now podcast. I'm Nick, the curious patient. And I'm Dr. Ron Dumar, chiropractic physician and Chinese medicine doctor. This is the Be Well Now podcast. As I said, we like to talk about how to feel good now, live in the present moment. That's a very important one. Uh, we want to talk about preserving health and happiness. And one of those is, you know, the science behind the ancient practice of cupping. And I've had cupping done. Michael Phelps, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. They made it famous when they famously had those big red welts on their back. Uh-huh. And everybody right? was wondering, they were curious, what is this? Michael Phelps shows up on the pool side and got these great big marks and all of a sudden cupping goes crazy. Yeah, everybody it's good enough for it. elite athletes. It's obviously mm -hmm. something that you may want to know more about. Yeah. I mean, why and why? Everyone's wondering when they see, why is Michael Phelps using this? He must be doing something I want to do if I want to become a better athlete or to get to the next level or to train a little bit harder than, uh, than I currently am. Because obviously he's at Olympic level. So it motivates people to be more curious about what the potential of cupping is. So what do you have on the table here? I guess what is cupping... Yeah. And how does it work? So there's a variety of different approaches, modern approaches to cupping. Traditionally, cupping has always been done with a flame and uh, and a cup, right? Or a, a glass or bamboo or a clay pot of some sort. But you would use you would use alcohol or use a flammable substance. You could even use paper or herbs as long as you could get the heat in there. And you would you would create a vacuum by burning the oxygen out of the cup. Can we do a demo? Or by expanding, another way of saying that is you expand the molecules by introducing the heat into the cup. So they expand. And then when you place it on the skin, those molecules tighten and contract, and it creates a vacuum that pulls the tissue up and into the cup. So, yes, you want to do a demo? Yeah, let's see it. You just wanted to, okay, he wants to get right to the demo. So let's do this one. That we'll do the original. Well, we are a video podcast. We're also available on Spotify, Apple, your favorite podcast platforms. Leave us a five-star review there if you could, and, and subscribe to the channel if you're watching this. We also have an acupuncture podcast where we do a, a live demo of acupuncture. So we're going to put oh, that in the description below. I'd love to see that one. That's a really good That's one. That's a good one. And I try to get something out of this as well, selfishly. Okay, this is one of the reasons I like to do uh, traditional fire cupping, but I will show you these before I I get going this right here i am going to use this flame i've learned this technique have you watched those instagram videos or the facebook videos and there's you're you're looking and watching the video you know something's going to happen and and they're just going to show you something else right before you get to it so i'm going to do that to all of you i hope that you're not mad with me right now but we will get to using this flame i promise okay so this is another type of cup this is a uh, essentially a flexible disc, and you can apply this to the skin. And as you as you distort that cup, you can see and apply it to the skin, and then release it. You can get oh, that I feel suction. suction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, I'm trying to pull that off. Boop, now it's off. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. So cupping is an immu immune modulator, meaning it signals an immune response exactly. to speed healing. Uh -huh. and tissue recovery. Um, I'm reading some notes here as you're doing it. Yeah, so anytime you tear down tissue, you break down tissue, like uh, when, when you're working out or if you have an injury, there's an immune modulated response to it. So we say that, uh, that acupuncture, or I should say in this case, cupping, we say that it modulates the immune response. What does modulate so mean? So it's, it's stimulating the immune response or okay. the immune system to work in a specific area. So if, if I have an injured tissue, I'm usually going to have swelling or some sort of even bruising, some damage to that area. So you can imagine stagnation or pooling of blood or of tissues of some sort. And it can be, it, it can hurt. It can be dull, like a dull, heavy, achy sensation. And that lack of mobility and movement of, of fluid through the tissues actually results in this achy, heavy sensation. Mm. So what we do is we say, well, we're, we're going to create a pressure gradient, right? By using a vacuum effect with a cup. And that pressure gradient is going to 
move that tissue up and closer to the surface so it can be disseminated and essentially decreasing the pain, removing and eliminating the stagnation that was there or the lack of blood flow and circulation and allowing the body to heal itself by saying, hey, uh, as well to the immune system, there's an issue here. There's a problem here. And so we're drawing the attention of the immune system to this area. And as those, as those uh, stagnate tissues move up, they also become in more contact with immune uh, cells. Let's, let's see it in action here. All right, you ready? Oh, yeah, I was born ready. So I was going to show you the other one, the, uh, the pump style. This is another more modern style uh, that we use. This is a hand pump, and essentially you take the cup and you place it in there, and you will pump like that to create your vacuum effect. And so is there a show, flame involved here or no? There's no flame yet. We're okay. Not, Remember, we're, we, I want, we're doing that. That's our teaser, right? These okay. are our teasers right here. And so okay. we're going to get to the flame. Uh, perhaps telling people what we're doing by teasing them is not All right. appropriate. But we are. Here we go. So I'm going to create that vacuum with the... Oh, let's see. That one came right off. That's a swing in a minute. Would you so, normally do an arm? I know we're just doing this for uh, prime yeah, time Yeah, we here. do it on an arm. And I've got a little larger cup. There are smaller cups as well. But one thing that we can do to try to improve that is we can put a little bit of ointment on there because i've had it on my back before yeah but yeah never on we, my arm yeah so we've this done is, it on your back no you never have uh, uh have we not done it yeah, on your back I, you've, i've never had cupping here really but when i first started getting acupuncture like i don't know 10 years ago you did get it then i had it, i had one treatment then yeah oh, i was like in go. seattle though see now that okay boy once does we, that look strange once we get the tension right and we get the the ointment and the surface right it works a lot better but yeah definitely hairy as you can tell more hairy surfaces are are more difficult now this i can just use this little knob right here to release all of that vacuum pressure are we and done it's gone so that that's it typically we'll leave it on for about 10 to 12 minutes okay? yeah why did you just give me the the soft treatment yeah because we're give me something I can because we're you. wanting to get the big one. Oh, the good one okay yeah. Wanted to go for you the, big the, full, the full Monty. Okay. Okay, so this is why I actually like to perform cupping. Uh, You're a obviously, I like to heal. I like the healing effects of it, right? Yes. But I also get to use a flame. Uh, now, wow. what we're going to do is use this flame again to expand the molecules within the cup. Or you could say heat the cup or burn off the oxygen, right? Okay. So we're going to burn that oxygen out, release... And then there's your suction. Whoa. Both of them felt... Oops, I think it's going to fall off. No. Both of them felt, like, intensely at first, like they were um, they were grabbing on, and then they sort of waned. Yeah, and that's... A lot of that right now is because of the, the hair. So if I hold it... Hold it on slightly, you that's going to, hold to it? allow the... You That's going to allow that tension to remain. I think that one might okay. That one might hold pretty well for us. So yes, this is this is cupping. Now, oftentimes we'll combine this with acupuncture, so to help stimulate yeah. the nerves as well, uh, to improve overall circulation and blood flow, to stimulate the the brain, and also to stimulate the immune response in the body. Uh, immune system activity is healing activity. And uh, the more we can initiate uh, a response by the immune system and direct it to a very focused area, the better results we're going to have. So sometimes we can have other responses, immune responses that are become more systemic, or, you know, like in a, in a cold or a flu or something like that, your whole body can feel a little achy. Yeah. So that's, the, that's your immune system trying to clear the pathogen from the body. And so you, you can feel those heavy immune chemicals moving everywhere through the body. And it, re, it essentially is like inflammation that goes through the body and it makes it feel heavy, achy, sore, and stiff. So this is one of the things we do to help release and clear inflammation. Cupping is also something that has been used for, for colds and flus. Uh, even for a cough, like a bronchial disorder, I could do. I would do <coughs> cupping. Of. Yeah, there you go. I would do cupping along the uh, bronchial uh, border in the back, and uh, also potentially in the front. Thought I had a cough. You thought yeah, that was the the Is this applause cough though? one. That's applause. Oh, there you go. There's a cough in here somewhere. <coughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, Signal B minus for the uh, the producer of the podcast. Hey, speaking of. Um, 
I, I have been feeling sick lately, so I should have got some cupping. I wonder though, what conditions would benefit from cupping? I mean, is it is it pretty much athletes, or is it more than that? Yeah, athletes for sure benefit from cupping, but remember also you, you mentioned Gwyneth Paltrow. So Gwyneth Paltrow showed up to the red carpet with cupping marks all over her back. So then the other question might be, well, why would why would she have had that? Why did Gwyneth Paltrow have cupping? Well, none of us none of us know that I'm aware, but there are many other reasons that uh, you could utilize cupping that would be beneficial for things like arthritis. You can even use cupping for anxiety, um, uh, high blood pressure. So even acupuncture kind of relaxes you, but cupping would increase that relaxation or how does that work on anxiety? Yeah, so cupping cupping is something as well that's because of the stimulation to the uh, immune system and the immune response. And it also works with your your immune system is regulated to the autonomic nervous system. So it has an effect on your brain as well and your brain chemistry. And so it affects that by releasing essentially a dopamine in the body and it has serotonin balancing effects uh, in the body. So that can really... Uh, affect your anxiety can really have a beneficial impact on your mood uh, also but things even uh, like um, what we mentioned stress right anxiety depression uh, even asthma like lung related disorders I'll use it for Uh, headaches any any soreness achiness painful uh, injury or tissue damage, anything you can imagine that's like a muscle or tendon uh, layer issue, it's good for that, certainly, uh, and many and many many more things. And then how long do these red marks last? Oh, that's a really good question because uh, obviously someone showed up to the red carpet. So if you if you do get cupping, you want to make sure if you're going to be somewhat self conscious about it anyway, or believe that you would be. You want to make sure that you're going to give yourself a good four to five days after the cupping session. I usually tell people they'll last for three to four days. Okay, so, so this you'll see them have just like a strange red welt on it. Yes, love that. Can't wait for that. Now, certain areas, and this is the interesting thing with cupping as well. You'll when you put the cups on, not all of the areas that the cup was applied to are equally reddened. And this is indicative of what's happening below the surface. So below the surface, and this goes back to what, the reason for why we're doing cupping, below the surface, we can identify certain muscle regions or muscular areas where this stagnation or this damaged tissue has occurred. And then we use the cupping to begin to draw that inflammation, that stagnation up and out of there. So if you apply some, some practitioners will apply cupping like, lots and lots of cups from the neck, shoulders, all the way down the back. Okay. And they'll have, uh, they'll utilize a whole lot of cups and we can do that as well. Other times they'll, they'll lather down the spine and the back or the area that they're treating and they'll apply the cup and then move it almost like a tissue massage. And they're identifying and looking for those fibrous, fibrous areas where the tension is greater and the stagnation is heightened so that they can leave the cup in that specific focal point. Because what you'll see is you apply them to the whole back and it may not have the same response. It doesn't because there's not the same amount of stagnation throughout the entire breadth of the muscle. Certain region alone has been injured or damaged and that's the area we want to remove the stagnation from. So this is good for people who have injuries? Like who, who would this be appropriate for? So anyone who suffering... Should and shouldn't do it, I guess. Oh, yeah. So I think that's great. Yeah. Anyone suffering with like a uh, ache or pain or um, somebody who maybe a, a easier way to of saying this is if you're dealing with metastatic cancer, uh, typically we're well, we don't want to do it in that case because we're what we don't want to do is increase blood flow and circulation of the condition. We don't want to we don't want to uh, mobilize it more. Right. Uh, or make it spread. With pregnancy, we are cautious. Let's put it that way. I'm very cautious doing it in pregnancy. So it would determine, I would be determined by where or the location that we would be performing it. Um, I would avoid doing it in the, in the low back and obviously not do it over the abdomen. 
Uh, but but somebody, if they're not pregnant, we can do it for um, somebody who has abdominal issues or abdominal pain. Uh, we can do it, and it can be beneficial for them in that case. Um, let me see. Any any other things that I... High blood pressure? We, we can do it for high blood pressure patients. Yeah, it's actually something that's been shown to reduce blood pressure. Uh, blood pressure for patients. Um, Boy, is this a bizarre feeling. Like it, it doesn't hurt, but I feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and, and one other thing as well is like, let's say people often will have, um, will will deal a lot with veins, um, like spider veins and varicose veins. And uh, sometimes even patients come in and they have deep vein thromboses. So in each of those cases, uh, we'd want to be very, very cautious. And I, I would really avoid uh, saying it's probably not for you, at least not to do on that area. But you could certainly have it done on your back, or your spine, or another location in which a doctor uh, was able to evaluate you and determine uh, where the appropriate spot was. So I'm thinking of like things, I don't know, I, I have a short, sore shoulder sometimes, you know. So it's like, do you eat better to reduce inflammation? Do you... Do you, do you ice it? Do you do cupping? Like where would cupping play into like just something that kind of nags you when you're approaching middle age? Yeah. So cupping, can, for a friend. cupping can be kind of like a, a part of your routine. Um, I do have some patients who will utilize cupping on a regular basis. Uh, typically the way it works in our office is I put together a treatment plan for patients and we go through a series of uh, a variety of different types of treatments, and we begin to use that as a, a study for which uh, treatments they are most amenable to or what works the best for them. And so uh, I would recommend if you're saying, okay, I want to do something for my back, my achy sore muscles, I'm, I'm a pretty active individual, you have to determine, first of all, what's your, what's your uh, level of activity and the frequency that you might be feeling sore and achy, and what's the level of support then that you need to equally apply to that? So the, the more active you are, right, and, and the more likely you are to be tearing down muscles and rebuilding them and potentially uh, injuring them, then also the higher uh, uh, amount of frequency, the, the more frequent you're going to want to do cupping. Do you do acupuncture before cupping or cupping? I do it at the same time. Okay. So I do it uh, in the middle of it. I'll apply the cups. I'll apply the needles. Uh, and, and then we let you sip and then we pull them off. So I, I, I love the mobile cupping uh, or like moving along. So especially on the back, it's not always the most comfortable, um, but it is a really good tissue massage. And it really does help with reducing the adhesions and identifying the places that are most necessary to utilize the cupping. And so I really like to use the mobile cupping. So typically I'll do like a bit of a massage uh, in the upper and around the shoulders, the upper back and around the shoulders, uh, and then down in the lower back and around the buttock or upper glute. Uh, we use the larger cups, obviously on the lower back, and we use the smaller cups up by the shoulders uh, and the arms. I'm just trying to envision like how they, this from ancient China, like, how they even invented how did you this? Di how did you discover this? You know, another interesting thing is that I uh, it has been used. Cupping has often been used with bites or stings uh, to try to get this toxin to come out. So you can al you can almost think of it uh, that way. I I can't say that I know that that's how it was originated, but it does make sense. I think we can we can see a practical line of logic there where someone is bitten or stung, and we want to get rid of that as quickly as possible. Well, this is a, a method uh, that they've utilized for thousands of years to remove the toxin from the body uh, in the very route in which it entered. That's so wild. I don't know. I feel like I'm very calm now with yeah. this on my arm. Yeah. Maybe that's in my head, but what is it, you know? Well, your body again. Your body's releasing a lot of uh, of a lot of hormones, and it's releasing a lot of uh, neurotransmitters that are helping to balance mood and stabilize mood as well. Just with one cup. With a cup. That's yeah. it. Yeah, immunomodulation as well, right? So it's it, your immune system stirring. It, essentially, it's it's pushing and priming the body's mechanisms of healing, right? So anytime you push and prime, 
uh, the body's mechanisms of healing, you're going to have a beneficent effect from it. Now we, we saw that happening. I, I could feel it changing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now it's off. So what, what have we done? So now what we've done, you can see on your arm, there is a little red mark. I don't think that you're going to have much of anything there. Uh, we didn't really dig around into your arm either. There are a lot of, uh, a number of different evaluation techniques that we use when we're inspecting the muscle, Right. And, and determining whether or not cupping is one that uh, a oh, treatment that we want to use doesn't feel any different. Yeah, it feels not, the same. Feels not, the same. It's not like it's like oh my gosh. So uh, um, we essentially use these assessment tools, um, the evaluation. We'll use palpation. We'll use muscle testing. See if there's any sort of weakness uh, or variation in the musculature. Uh, and where we find those kinds of weaknesses or variation, then we'll hone into a specific muscle region and then say, okay, what's going on with that muscle itself? Um, and that's, that's really how we're able to channel in to be as precise and accurate uh, and the most effective we can be. How long do uh, results last? Uh, so typically people what are going to feel, yeah, well, the result is that you're going to feel, again, you experienced a, a calmness, a little bit of a Maybe you could say a slight euphoria type of uh, a symptom. I found myself uh, relaxed effect. and I was like, am yeah. I getting tired? Yeah. Ma- yeah. 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 <sighs> You're like, oh, everything feels a little bit better. And I could sleep on this podcast. I think it, was, we just it chilled sleep? me out a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Okay. So um, the results, those results are going to last from anywhere from a couple of hours to uh, several days. Uh, and then after that, Really, the the majority of the effect or the work that we initiated or stimulated uh, from the immune system uh, is is it's being affected by other things now, right? So it's it's not still riding the effect of a single cupping treatment, but there are certain effects that are uh, long term. Okay, as with any treatment. Something that we do is if we're breaking up scar tissue or releasing muscles, sometimes they get adhered to each other or they're not moving on each other as well as they should. And as we use cupping to release some of those adhesions, then you're going to have a continued benefit moving forward, which is improved flexibility, decreased pain, and oftentimes even numbness. Like you can have a decrease in numbness sensation. People often get to their hands. Because the nerve is not being entrapped anymore like it was, stuck in between sticky tissue and material, like healing tissue that's trying to seal everything down like a cast. If folks are in Utah and they want to stop by, they want to learn more, how do they do that? Well, you can come on down to Community Health and Wellness, right? Or you can check us out on uh, chwheber.com. Or you can find us on Instagram. You can find me personally on Instagram. What about this uh, Lionade I've been hearing about if they get a little tired after the cupping treatment? Oh, yeah. Well, if you need a pick-me-up, Lionade is the way to go. Lionade is the healthy energy drink, and it's uh, available here. You can you can order it online at earthsmedicinecabinet.com. So I flirt with coffee and caffeine, and uh, it's different than those. You call that flirting? I, <laughs> I haven't. I had a cup what's of coffee. Def- what's your definition? I had a cup of coffee this morning, steady but dating. But okay, I save Earth Medicine Cabinets Lion Aid yes. for a pre workout because yep. if I save it for that and I do a scoop of that, I'm like, let's go. Gives you good pump. Yeah, it gives you good pump. Yeah, and it's a natural. It's a natural pump, but it yeah. feels a little bit different than coffee. Right. So, but it doesn't. I don't get jitters. I would say coffee, if anything, gives me jitters, but Lion Aid's not like that. But anyway, it's a great. I, I enjoy it very much. Lionade is fantastic, and it is not if you're a, if you're a frequent gym goer and you're looking for that great big like veins popping out of your arms and your neck type of pump. It's not going to give you that, but it will give you sustained energy, and you'll definitely feel a difference between the the fatigue that you were experiencing before and your ability to feel motivated and interested in what it is you're doing now. In fact, because of that, we use it a lot for patients who have ADHD or attention issues, uh, and it improves memory and focus and concentration. And because it, we utilize a lot of vitamins and minerals and herbals, it's got a, a special herbal formula in there that I created. And because, because we do it in that way, it's something that parents can feel safe using with themselves or their children. Uh, it was a, a formula we actually had children in mind when we created it. 
Uh, and I think I told you about this story before when I saw patients giving their kids, or patients, I saw parents giving their kids uh, Red Bull and... Before soccer matches, uh, Yeah, right? monsters yeah. before soccer matches, like here. And I'm like, oh boy, we could make this a lot healthier for our kids and not not uh, uh, not shoot their um, kidneys up so bad because it's so hard. A lot of these uh, energy drinks, they're so hard on the kidneys. And uh, we're just setting the kids up for um, stress and struggle and anxiety and palpitations and all sorts of other issues moving forward if we introduce them to all of these caffeine-laden um, drinks. If you made it this far on the podcast, thank you. You're someone who probably wants to try something natural before you try something synthetic. So it's like, try Lionade before you do the pre-workout. It's a great uh, coffee alternative as well. I don't know how we got onto that, except for that I was trying to give you a couple plugs there at the end. Yeah, it was great. You, you know? moved, I appreciate the hey. plug. The more people we can get to buy Lionade, I think that's great. It turns them on to something that's super beneficial, super healthy for them. It's uh, better than coffee. Although coffee is another subject for another day, isn't it? It sure is. It, that and your relationship with, with it. it. <laughs> it's a never-ending love story. Mm-hmm. When you realize it's a, it's an on again off again relationship, it's perfect for mm-hmm. sitcom fodder. All right, everybody, be well now. Be well now. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.